So here's how we use Claude Code at maximum power. I'll show you MCPs that barely anyone is talking about. I'll show you my most optimal Claude Code config using Daddy Claude here as well. We'll go through all the commands and the hooks that I'm running. We'll go through the terminal configurations as well, the best VS Code settings to help you work faster as well. We'll go through spawning multiple agents at once in parallel, and I'll give you the best approach of how we should be building in Claude Code. So the first MCP we're gonna be looking at is Ref, and this is actually a much, much better alternative to Context 7. So you can see right here, Ref is essentially taking all of these with Context 7. We have web search, web scraping, private code search on GitHub, PDF search as well, into one unified solution, as you can see right here. And the reason why it's so much more powerful is because we're countering that context rot, which you can see right here, because we're giving the agent just enough context to understand about the problem, to understand about what it has to do from the documentation, and that's it. Whereas context seven is just bloating your agent's context way too much, and then it starts to hallucinate and gets really, really dumb. And another really nice MCP that I personally made is Can You Reflect? So I'll give you a little demo here. And you can see right here, the MCP is just triggered, and we're going through a reality check. And it's asking itself, if this was ordered by someone who wanted to find flaws, what would they find? So this is really good for breaking Claude and ensuring that it's not always overly positive and allowing it to kind of slice through the middle, pattern interrupt it and kind of disrupt its, you know, overly positive vibe. And then now we get a proper proposal. So now it's suggesting to keep it as option A as a simple CLI tool. And this is exactly right because what it originally created was overly complex. Another really simple trick that I see barely anyone doing as well is just adjusting your seashell config. So we can access that via this command right here. And then right here, you can see that I have the aliases set for Claude, for continue, and also for dangerous skip permissions as well. So by just typing in now CC, it's then going to run Claude. Or it's, if I do a CCC, it's then going to run Claude with continue. And then CCD will run with the dangerously skip permissions as well. Very, very simple, but it helps you work a lot faster. And to get my ultimate config, you can just put in this command right here, npx daddy dash Claude. We just press enter. This is going to download everything from NPM and just wait for the installation to go through. And we're getting QLTY, which I use in the hooks. We're downloading all the MCPs that I have here as well. We're doing all the configuration files, which is your settings.json, your claw.md. We have 15 slash commands as well. And then we also have the hooks and scripts. And as for working in VS Code and Claude Code at the same time, this here, in my opinion, is the ultimate setup. So the actual settings that I have here, you know, in terms of the themes and things like that, it's not really a big deal. That's totally up to you. But how I have it set up just like this is very, very important. So in this section right down here, all right, this is where I would be running my commands. This could be my type checking, my linting, my tests, my NPM run devs, all this kind of crap. I have everything set in the little mini terminal just below, you know, one of the files here. This obviously on the left is where obviously I'd be running Claude code and be conversing with Claude code right here. Now this is still allowing me to see all my files, see what's going on, see the source control, you know, all the updates that I haven't committed yet to GitHub as well, everything I have access to here. And just in case I need to see all the history as well from the previous commits, I can see all that right here as well. And just having a bird's eye view of everything that's going on. So I'll show you some commands from Daddy Claude here as well. So I'll just run the uh, slash check. And this will actually spawn multiple agents in parallel and start doing your linting, start doing your type checks, start running tests and all this stuff as well. So we can see right here, it's running all of these, okay? And it has to, you know, finalize and everything has to be green before it can stop. Now, this is really important because we need everything to be in the green. We can't be just leaving errors there, you know, syntax errors, type checking errors, linting errors and all these other errors, right? We cannot be leaving them in our code base before we deploy, before we take these things to production. Now you can see we have three agents here running in parallel, one focusing on the linting, one focusing on fixing syntax errors, and one focusing on formatting the files with Prettier. And there are a range of different commands that I've added here, which are really, really useful. And a few weeks ago, Claude Code actually got an update to be using hooks. So this is really, really useful. And this is BAM shell. It's a shell script that I've made here, which is then going to be running QLTY commands. So you can see the commands right here as well. I have the QLTY FMT, which is going to be for the auto formatting. We have the check, which is going to be doing linting. And essentially when there is an issue, we'll be doing an exit to 
and then at this point Claude will actually visibly see these errors which are in our files as it's actually editing, writing and creating the files. And once everything checks out, it says code quality is good. So now it knows to continue. And this right here is just a simple little notification script. So when Claude is actually done with its task, it's then going to be playing this done.mp3 file right here, which is then going to notify us that Claude is finished and that maybe we should alt tab and you know continue with the next task. And then I just want to show you about behavior driven development. So this is how we're going to be building features and whatever it is that we want to be building. This is the kind of approach that we want to be taking. And the reason why I really like this approach is because we are describing the behavior to Claude of how we want our feature to function, to run and what it should do. And essentially all we have to do is just describe what we want, define the requirements. It's then going to create the tests which are going to be failing tests then refactor that code into the most simplest form until that actual feature and that function passes and this prevents Claude from making really long complex code when it could have just been something really really simple short and a lot easier to manage and I actually run a community on school as well so if you're interested in getting into Claude code checking out some of the other stuff that I've made and taking it a step further feel free to check it out but if I don't see you there hope to see you in the next video